Hi, my name is Oishi, and today I'll be discussing the aging mind, more specifically Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is known to be the most common type of dementia. Alzheimer's disease is simply the inability or the diminished capacity for thought, memory, or decision making that interferes with performing daily tasks. They also affect behavior, feelings, and relationships. It is a progressive disease beginning with mild memory loss and possibly leading to loss of the inability to carry on a conversation and respond to the environment. It is inevitable that eventually each of us will grow old and begin to face more and more health problems as our age rises. Elderly people are challenged by many illnesses and diseases that unfortunately are incurable. Those diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease eventually end up in nursing homes or hospice care centers. Today I'm going to be discussing two different types of the Alzheimer's disease. The first type is the late onset. So the majority of Alzheimer's patients have the late onset type whose signs first appear in their mid-60s. The late-onset version of the disease is not directly caused by any particular gene, according to research. However, there has been something found called the A polypoprotein E, um, also known as the APOE gene, and it's located on chromosome 19, and possessing one form or allele increases a person's risk. APOE version E4 is called a risk factor um, gene because it increases a person's risk of developing the disease. However, having the APOE4 allele does not guarantee that a person will acquire Alzheimer's disease. Others who acquire Alzheimer's disease do not have any APOE4 alleles, despite having an APOE4 allele in some cases. The other one is called the early onset Alzheimer's disease. The majority of individuals with Alzheimer's disease are older adults, though it can also affect those in their 30s or their 40s. Only approximately 10% of patients have this version of the Alzheimer's and the early onset form of Alzheimer's affects a very small percentage of individuals, as you can see. When the illness starts to spread, many of them are in their 40s and 50s and experts are almost unsure of what causes Alzheimer's disease to first appear. To gain a better understanding of how the aging mind causes Alzheimer's, let's discuss a little bit of the biological aspect. Amyloid plaques are hard, insoluble accumulations of beta amyloid proteins that clump together between the nerve cells. Neurofibrillary tangles are insoluble, twisted fibers found inside the brain cells. These tangles consist primarily of a protein called tau, which forms part of a structure called a microtubule. The microtubule helps transfer nutrients and other important substances from one part of the nerve cell to another. The presence of plaques around a neuron causes them to die, possibly by triggering an immune response to the immediate area. Tangles form inside of neurons and interfere with the cellular machinery used to create and recycle proteins, which ultimately kills the cell, and they believe that two protein causes um, nerve cell loss and damage. Many individuals are concerned about developing Alzheimer's disease, particularly if a family member has already had it in the past. Although it's not guaranteed that you'll get the disease, but it might imply that you are more vulnerable to it. We all inherit a copy of some form of APOE, which we discussed earlier, from each parent. Those who inherit one copy of APOE version E4 from their mother or father have an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's. Now let's discuss some of the common symptoms that an Alzheimer's patient may have. So the first one starting off is indecisiveness and forgetfulness. Alzheimer's reduces the ability to think and reason considerably, and the person fails to make decisions or proper judgments. Their judgments may become poor and they may make bad decisions or become completely indecisive. Next up is behavior and feeling. An Alzheimer's patient undergoes many behavioral and personality changes, like depression, delusion, and mood swings are definitely prevalent. Distrust, social withdrawal, changes in sleeping patterns, and aggressiveness also occur. People who develop Alzheimer's disease often undergo a change in how they behave or act. They are often confused and as a result can become anxious, upset, or completely fearful. Last off, and probably the most obvious, would be difficulties in memory. The most crucial symptom of Alzheimer's is memory loss, as a person faces difficulties in remembering. It also leads to occasional memory lapses. An Alzheimer's patient often gets lost in familiar places and also does not find the right word to identify objects and tends to forget close relatives and family members. 
Now for some of the more uncommon symptoms include hiding things or believing other people are hiding things, imagining things that aren't there, wandering away from home, pacing a lot, showing unusual sexual behavior, or even taking sarcasm literally. As it is probably very clear, Alzheimer's definitely affects the mind and mental health. As the disease progresses, memory loss worsens and decision making becomes more difficult. A person with Alzheimer's can become angry when family members try to help. Eventually, social life becomes much harder. People may not recognize longtime friends or family members and may become way more isolated. People with dementia often experience changes in their emotional responses. They may have less control over their feelings and how to express them. For example, someone may overreact to things, have rapid mood changes, or feel irritable. They may also appear unusually distant or uninterested in things. The constant change and instability makes it difficult for them to mentally be stable or healthy. So what now? What steps are being taken forward to help diagnose and slow down the progression of Alzheimer's? There are definitely multiple treatments that scientists are working on, and one of them is clinical trials. There are currently multiple clinical trials in process to help diagnose and cure Alzheimer's. One very interesting trial that I personally read about um, has to do with initiating the beginning of a Alzheimer's NGF clinical trial, which is also known as the nerve growth factor clinical trial. The experiment involves a minimally invasive neurosurgery in which they precisely drill two burr holes into his patient's skull to inject either a drug or placebo solution into the brain. The hypothesis claims that this drug will send a message to the patient's brain cells to make more nerve growth factor to help protect nerve cells from dying. The goal would be to stop or slow down the progression of this disease. Now, in order to be accepted into the trial, the patient must fit a certain criteria, and to be eligible for the study, participants must be in a good general health, have a reliable study partner to accompany all study visits, be on standard of care medications, and have all mild Alzheimer's disease. Another treatment that's also being in process right now is disease-modifying therapies and drugs. Disease-modifying therapies aim to slow down the growth or progression of dementia by blocking its pathogenic system. In contrast to presently available symptomatic treatments, they must begin before the onset of moderate to severe dementia, indicating the necessity of identifying patients early in the course of the disease. Disease-modifying therapies aren't a cure, but they reduce how many relapses someone has and how serious they are. DMDs and DMTs work by interacting with the immune system and calming the inflation that is attacking the central nervous system. At the moment, the only disease-modifying drug authorized to treat Alzheimer's disease is aducanonubab. This treatment, which targets the protein beta amyloid and works as a immunotherapy, helps to lessen amyloid plaques, which are brain lesions connected to Alzheimer's disease.